I just ran into somebody with a very interesting perspective. Uh, he's gonna share it with us. Is recreational scuba gear really life support? We've all heard that, it's life support. Is it? So my take on that is that's not how it should be used. And I just wanna say up front, I've been teaching for over 40 years. I've taught privately at community colleges, universities, dive shops, rec departments. I'm a certified instructor in three different agencies. You said you're a course director trainer. I'm a course director trainer for one, but right now I'm speaking strictly for myself. I'm not representing any agency or any organization. But my take and what I've told my students is that within recreational scuba, we should not be using scuba gear as a life support system. We should be using it as a means of spending an extended period of time at a depth from which we can get to the surface unassisted in the event of a catastrophic gear failure. In other words, if you're down there and some mysterious alien death ray comes down and disintegrates all your gear, you should be able to just go, hate that, and swim to the surface. If you can't do that, then you should be carrying redundant scuba. So from my perspective, I present this as a cumbersome convenience to let us just spend more time at depth than we otherwise would be able to. If it's life support, it means if the piece of equipment fails, you die. My belief in recreational scuba is if a piece of equipment fails, you swim to the surface. Or like you said, have a redundancy. At that point, then yes, you have that. And then the question becomes, do you truly use it in a recreational sense? There's no obstructed overhead. There's no glass ceiling in terms of decompression. If you're diving without those restrictions, it's still recreational. But from my perspective, once you have gone beyond the depth from which you can swim to the surface unassisted, you've taken it out of the realm of recreational. I've only done a very little bit of climbing in, say, rock gyms. But to me, an analogy might be the difference between climbing with ropes and free climbing. Once you go beyond the depth from which you can get to the surface by yourself, if your equipment fails, it's over. Just like if you're free climbing and you fall off the rock. And so I think it, what we should be doing, making it more of a personal responsibility for each and every individual diver to have a really good feel for their personal depth limit, the recreational scuba diver depth limit, if you will. And there are ways you can train for that, the ways you can practice for it and maintain it. And I think we should be including maybe more of that in the training. But for me, I would love to see a switch away from the idea of recreational scuba gear presented as and or used as a life support system. CISAs, mm -hmm. some people still, ESAs, mm -hmm. whatever. Sure. For open water, the standards require people to do it. Most agencies from around 20 feet, and they practice that. What most people don't know that I'm finding out is done properly, you can do them from pretty big depths. Do you think people should be practicing those, let's say at an open water advanced level, at the depth that they're certified to, like say 60 feet? Just an opinion. This again is what I've told my classes for as long as I've been teaching. When you leave here, when you're going to go from, say, 60 feet to your safety stop, do a simulated emergency swimming ascent. If you can't make it to your safety stop, you can't make it to the surface. So you shouldn't <laughs> be at 60 feet, right? Easy way to practice. I've seen instructors who will put their students on the bottom and they'll say, now listen, I'm going to give you the signal. You are out of air, swim to the surface. Then I want you to repeat the signal to me. I am out of air. I'm going to swim to the surface. Then take a nice deep breath and swim. And my question is, where does that deep breath come from? You're out of air. And if I'm close enough for you to signal to me that you're out of air, you should be saying, give me some. You shouldn't be saying I'm going up. So I think a lot of it's training. Again, in my classes, what I would do is I would have divers do this from a neutrally buoyant situation when they're comfortable with that. And you're doing it in a pool, say 12 feet, because I happen to have a 12 foot pool. Then I'd have them do it on a half a breath. What's it feel like to do it on a half a breath? Then I'd have them do it from negatively buoyant instead of neutral to emphasize it's really, really beneficial to be neutral for a lot of reasons, including in the event you run out of air. So we try to put them through different scenarios and say, what if this happens? And then again, I stress, and I don't know that any students ever do it, but when you leave here, you can practice this or even just on a more practical basis, get on the surface with full set of gear. So you've got the drag that you'll have during a dive, take a breath off your regulator and on the surface, see how far you can swim at a controlled rate while exhaling gently the entire time. That gives you, if you can do 75 feet on the surface, right, and you don't have the whole Boyle's Law thing with the air in your lungs expanding to give you a little reserve, then you should be able to do it from 50 or 60 feet of depth. And if nothing else, you know whether or not you need to panic, right? <laughs> At least you know, <laughs> I'm going to make it or I'm not, but you'll have an idea. Do I need to think about dropping my belt or my weights? If you're 50 feet on the bottom and your buddy's 60 feet away, assuming you both survive, you can talk to your buddy about that, but at least you'll know, do I go for the surface? Do I go for my buddy? That is a mind-blowing perspective, particularly on, and I want to hear how you all feel about the life support theory 
at those depths for recreational diving. Yeah, and again, stress recreational. Recreational. To be clear, this is recreational. We're not talking tech, Trimax, Deco. Yes, sir. Clarify. Did well, thanks. Sure. Yeah, appreciate the perspective. Abs absolutely. Thank I felt you. like this for a long, long time. I just think we presented incorrectly. It's, it's hard to put the right words on the cake. It is, and you did it. And you did. We have had full dinner conversations. Oh, yeah.